Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello and welcome to this episode of our show. This is your host, Keith Doherty. Today, our special guest is top real estate broker, Scott Ulrich of Pacific Sotheby's International Realty based out of Coronado, California. Scott has been in real estate for 38 years, with the last 28 years being a broker and developer in Coronado, California, which is one of the most incredible places to live and work anywhere. He has been recognized in the Wall Street Journal and the top 250 individual brokers in the U.S., and in San Diego has been asked to be one of the power brokers, which is a consortium of dozens of the top agents from around the county in their market areas. He has also been asked by HGTV to host several episodes of Island Life showcasing Coronado and some of his clients that have purchased homes in the area. He has sold several hundred homes there and built condos and single-family homes there over the last 28 years. He doesn't think anyone knows more about Coronado real estate than he does, and with his wife's disappointment, he still answers his phone 24-7. All right, with all that said, Scott, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm happy to share a little bit about Coronado, California, and our business here on the island. Excellent. And, Scott, if we could start for, for our listeners, what led you into real estate? Was it something you always knew you wanted to do, or did you maybe stumble into it? No, no, I kind of stumbled into it. Actually, I, I wanted to play uh, football in college and pro football. I broke my neck. I uh, ended up having to figure out something to do out of college, and uh, I went into a site sales job uh, selling some condominiums and kind of went from there. Then I kind of figured out I want to be a developer, and I started developing back in Texas in the early 80s and uh, went from there to doing some commercial brokerage and brokers there. And uh, it just came something I could make a living doing, it, and it was a good thing. I seemed to have an aptitude for it and enjoyed doing it. Excellent. And what personal attributes, traits, or qualities do you think have most contributed to the success that you've had in real estate? You know, I think it's probably mostly like uh, most successful jobs is pretty much hard work and integrity and having good values and all the things that people appreciate about people that they're using in the service industry. Um, I think those values are all critical. On top of that, I think I'm uh, – pretty creative. I come up with some ideas and structures for deals and other things that uh, that uh, other people don't always see and uh, kind of find a way to make a deal when somebody somebody else might be, not be able to do it. I also think I'd kind of get to the point and understand where the deal point is, and that's a, a, a critical component of putting the deals together, especially on some of the high-end real estate deals that are, you know, have some moving parts or need a little special uh, way to look at them. So. Excellent. And do you think you could give our listeners uh, another example uh, of when your traits have played a role in your path towards success? Oh, sure. I've done a, a number of deals, and one of the more expensive deals, it was an $18 million purchase on a property that the owner, uh, he wanted to make sure that he could get his car collection, which was mostly Porsches, down into an underground garage, and they had not poured the garage yet, and he wasn't going to close it unless they could pour the garage, the driveway to the garage, and get his cars done and check it. And the seller didn't really buy into that. He thought the, the buyer was just delaying and trying to figure out a reason to extend his due diligence and so forth. And uh, I came up with the idea, and I offered to pay for it, which pressed the seller enough to end up doing it, but to put pavers down. We we're going to do brick pavers to create the, the driveway. Uh, for him to be able to test his cars going down there. And it was an was expensive proposition. It was about $30,000 to do it. And I offered to take care of and do it as a condition. And if he, if he bought the property, he'd reimburse me. If not, then uh, I'd eat it. And uh, the seller agreed to do that. And actually, we put the deal together with the seller going ahead and putting the pavers down. And the, and the owner ended up deciding to keep the pavers so it worked out for everybody. So it was kind of a, a off the off the off the map kind of deal. Yeah, for sure. That's definitely yeah. outside the box there. Yeah. So, obviously, Scott, you know, with, with all business and all ventures in life, not everything's always usually a smooth road to success. So, can you talk a little bit about some of the adversities or trials that you had to overcome in order to achieve your goals? Well, the uh, the biggest trial, the biggest trial that I can overcome was uh, I went broke at about uh, 26. I had started you know, in the real estate business right out of college and, and done pretty well for a few years as a developer, but uh, uh, Houston market, uh, and I and I loaded up and invested everything I'd made into uh, 
into a number of deals, and uh, and and at that time, uh, market in Houston went sideways, and when it went sideways, I went down with it and went broke. So I uh, kind of struggled around trying to make some deals in Houston, and I had a, an opportunity to come out to California, actually to work on a project in Mexico uh, with a former partner uh, back in Texas, and uh, it was a it was a hard thing to come and run it up the run it up as fast as I did, and then see it all go away. So it did teach me a lesson of that you should never take this stuff for granted, and, and it's been a good uh, a good life lesson. So, you know, what kept you going despite having these obstacles? You know, why didn't you give up? What was your driving force, your passion? Well, not not anything different than most people. I had a family. I had a one-year-old uh, little boy who had been born at uh, one pound, six ounces, and at 25 weeks premature. So he was uh, important, and my wife was trying to do everything to do to deal with all we were dealing with. So, you know, I had a, a family and responsibility there. So wouldn't wouldn't like anything anybody else wouldn't do just the same as uh, – I take care of my family, so I had to figure a way to make it work. And I guess kind of looking forward, what what is your vision for your career and your business over the next five years? You know, I'm, uh, I just turned 60. I've been working here in Coronado, California, which is an incredible island for 30 years, enjoying pretty much every day of it like I'm on a, a vacation. Um, I don't know really what I do on vacation or retiring, so I, I don't necessarily plan on retiring anytime soon, but... Uh, I do plan on trying to bring some people in to work with me to kind of build a little more of a team. I've been kind of a sole practitioner and done my own deal for the last 30 years, and I'm kind of developing a couple of other associates to, to be, in a, be in a position to, when I do slow down a bit, to, to take over and handle some of the stuff that, uh, that I've got here on the island and relationships and, and go from there. So that's how I see my next five years is kind of working on building, um, continuing my, building my business, but at the same time building some some other folks or people up to, to be able to help me with it down the road. And what do you, kind of on top of that, what do you feel is the best way you market yourself as a real estate professional so you can have that continual growth? You know, I've, I've gotten to where I'm spending more and more energy and effort trying to share Coronado with the world. I, a few years ago, I affiliated with uh, Sotheby's International Realty. At that time, I was I had the kind of premier boutique real estate office on the island. I was selling more of the trophy properties than anyone else, just as Sun Isle Realty, which was my own little company. Um, but I I recognize that Coronado, California, is not really that well thought of. People know about San Diego, and they don't refer to uh, Coronado. They think of La Jolla and Del Mar and there's a Santa Fe. But Coronado is probably the most special of all of them. So I'm spending most of my energy now marketing you know, outside of Coronado, outside of San Diego, I have a large presence of clients that come from Arizona, some from Texas, Colorado, and other places in the U.S., and then try to market a little even broader since um, outside the world through Sotheby's, we have the, the ability to do some really serious international marketing, and we do have offices and people in, in countries all over the world to, to help expand that. And just got back from a networking conference with them, uh, with the Sotheby's, we had 23 agents from all over the place, uh, all, the US, all the U.S. and the world. So that's what I'm doing is trying to share Coronado. And as people come to discover Coronado, um, hopefully they figure out that I'm probably the best person to help them figure out what's here. I've been doing it kind of the longest or as long as anybody and know as much about the market as anybody, if not more. So, And I think sometimes when people look at uh, real estate agents, they uh, there's misconceptions on what they actually bring to the table and what they do for people. So what do you think the biggest misconception or myth that people have about working with a real estate agent? You know, I, I'm not really sure, except that I think that a lot of people probably think that the job is just showing a few houses and, you know, picking a help, let a person pick a house out and negotiate a deal and buy it. There's, there are a lot more moving parts. And as we move forward and the Internet has become uh, so much, provides so much more information and stuff, I think uh, our relevancy is going to be even more important in that, uh, we need to know more about what's going on in the zoning and what's going to be built on the property and how it can be improved and all the little nuances of the neighborhoods and all that kind of stuff. So I think there's um, maybe a, a misconception as to what we do in that in that area. And I think also, I think a lot of people think we're motivated and by commission and getting just a, a fee and it's all about the commission. And, and I think that's a, a big, big misperception for those that are least successful. I mean, I think you get to a point where commissions are great and you make a lot of money on these transactions, but it's really when you earn the appreciation and the, 
respect of some of the clients that I work with is all the clients I work with. I hope that's, that's the most rewarding part. It makes you want to do it over again for them and continue to work. So I think, uh, I think sincerely, if you find people that are successful in this business, they do it for the right reasons, really trying to help their clients and putting their clients needs first. And if, uh, if they don't, since they're not, there's probably someone better to work. And Scott, let's say you get a call from a uh, family member or a friend. They're in another state. Uh, they want to sell their home. Uh, obviously, you know, with Sotheby's and, and you being a professional in the industry so long, you could probably easily do a referral and, and contact another agent. But from a general advice standpoint, what would you tell somebody to look for about selecting an agent that could best serve their needs, kind of how you make sure you take care of your clients? Yeah, it does kind of go back to what I think is most important about what I, you know, bring to the table. And, and I think it is knowledge, you know, of a market and understanding of the market and understanding of all the other aspects of the, uh, the area and so forth. And then having some experience, I mean, there's no real substitute for doing it for a long time. I think, you know, I'm a lot better broker now than I was 20, 20 years ago. Uh, so experience and knowledge and then also accessibility. I think you need to find someone that's going to be accessible and they answer their phone or can be reached by text or, you know, respond quickly. Because sometimes this is a, a short window to put something together or, and uh, you need to be able to be reached. Um, uh, whenever uh, whenever someone wants to reach you, so those are important things and traits. And I and I have done this many times. I had people ask me for other agents in other areas, and um, I, I typically try to look through and see who Sotheby's may have in that market. But more importantly, I go look in the market and try to figure out who the the kind of top broker is in that market, who's got a lot of properties for sale, and indicating kind of that they're trusted by the people in that community. So that's kind of a, a telltale sign if someone doesn't have very much activity in the market, they're either new to it or, or haven't been well received. So those are things. And I'll, I'll go out and search out and find out who the broker is. And then in all cases, I think it's important, whether it's a, a friend or you're looking for yourself, is to interview the broker and not just work with the first person that you run into or drags you into an open house or something, but uh, but interview the guy and, or girl and figure out uh, if they do know what they're doing and, and they've got a, a track record to, to support that. Excellent. And Scott, if, if somebody needs uh, real estate services, obviously in the, in the Coronado area, uh, what's the uh, best way they can find out more about you and how you can help them? Uh, I have my website set up to people look up, log on and I'm the way the internet's going. I think everybody goes to the internet first. Anyway, my website is at www.scottauric.com. It's S C O T T A U R I C H dot com, and uh, that's the easiest way to to look up. And there's a video on there and some history of my background and so forth. Uh, and if you come to Coronado, you can't miss me. I'm in the paper every week and signs around the island, and it's a uh, it's something I'm more than proud and happy to show people what's going on here on this island. It's a little town of twenty five thousand people, and it's a small community. So you know, if you've been here a while and been involved in all the things we've been involved in. It's uh, it's uh, a nice, nice place to, to be a part of. So come to Coronado and find me for sure. Excellent. Well, Scott, obviously we want to thank you for taking time uh, out of your schedule to come here today and share your professional real estate experience with our listeners. And if you're listening and you want to learn more about Scott, you can obviously go to his website, like he said. Also below this interview, we'll have a link to his site and any other contact information we have so you can reach out and make contact with Scott. So with that said, everybody, until our next show, have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.